everybody, Howard here with Double Stops on Guitar Explained. And what I mean by that exactly is I'm going to show you uh, what I consider to be some of the most basic double stops. They're very recognizable. We've all heard them in so many songs, right? And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to find them on the fretboard, how to relate them to the chords that you might be using, and how to uh, simply easily apply them to your playing, right? So that you can have fun with this stuff. And as a note, this lesson ties in rather nicely with my previous two lessons on using the major pentatonic scale. So I will definitely put a link to both of those in the uh, description box below. Uh, it would be a good idea to watch those. You don't have to, to use what's in this lesson, but uh, this is additional material, so it all goes together quite well. But this stuff stands on its own as well. Okay, so first of all, what is a double stop? A double stop is simply playing any two notes together at one time. And we're all familiar with that sound, right? So what I'm going to do right off the bat is I'm just going to play a musical example using what we're going to be covering in this lesson, and then I will show you exactly how to spot them on the fretboard, relate them to the chords that you're using, as I mentioned, and uh, easily get this stuff until you're playing, okay? So here we go. So before we get into working through the actual musical example, let's talk about how to find these double stops on the guitar very easily and how to apply them, okay? So I'm using four really simple chords, a G major, a B minor, a C major, and a D major. Four chords that you'll find in tons of songs, right? So how do you find the double stops that uh, correlate with the chords. So first we have a G chord. So what you want to do to spot these double stops, the kind that we're using here, is you go to a G bar chord, okay? And right inside that G bar chord is the root of the whole double stop pattern, okay? So if you take all of your fingers away from the chord except for your second finger, you'll see that you're on the fourth fret on the G string. Now put your first finger on the third fret on the E string and you have what I call the root position of this pattern. Now you can play it a couple of ways. You can use hybrid picking, pick the G string with your pick and simultaneously the uh, E string with your second finger. You can also play them individually. You can also just mute the B string by laying your second finger lazily across the uh, G string. That way you can just hit all three strings, the G, the B, and the uh, first E. So there's several different ways that you can use them, right? But again, it all comes off of that G bar chord. So let me review that one more time. You have a G bar chord. Take all of your fingers away except the second one. So you'll be on the fourth fret on the G string and then place your first finger on the third fret on the E string. And the pattern moves like this. Okay. Slide your second finger up to the fifth fret on the G string, of course. And then your third finger, your ring finger, is also at the fifth fret on the E string. And then take that up a whole step to the seventh fret. Back, if you like. And that's it. In some cases, especially with blues, you can use the 6th fret as well, and I will be covering that, how these apply to blues as well. But for now... So we've got a G chord. And finding the double stop off of the G bar chord, we have... 
then we have a B minor chord, and uh, we will go through the whole exercise, but just showing you how to find these, because that's the most important thing, right? How do you find these off of major chords, and how do you find them off of minor chords, okay? So we've got a B minor, okay? Now again, if we uh, resort to the bar chord up here, a B minor bar chord at the seventh fret. Sorry about that. <laughs> B minor chord at the seventh fret. Okay, so it's the same idea, all right? Spot the uh, seventh fret on the G string. That's where your index finger is. Spot the seventh fret on the G string. Simply bar across the G, the B, and the first E, but we're not playing the B string. We're just playing the G and the uh, E. So that's the root, what I call the root of a double stop off of a minor chord. Take that up a whole step. And then the same shape we had before, the root shape off of the G chord. So it's 10 on the E string and 11 on the uh, G string. So now you know how to find a double stop off of a major chord. And then off of a minor chord. Pretty simple, right? And you just use the bar chords as your foundation for finding them. Now, there's different ways to find them, and I'll talk about that as well. But for now, that's kind of what we're working with, okay? Now, the next chord in line was simply a C major, however you choose to play it, okay? Now, if I wanted to find the double stops for that chord using the E and the G strings again, I would take that major shape up to the 8th fret for a C major chord. And I would find the double stops in the exact same way I did before off of the G. Remove all of your fingers except for the second one, which is now on the ninth fret on the G string. And then using that same shape, we place the first finger on the eighth fret on the E string, right? And then follow that same pattern. Right? But what I did was I actually played that an octave lower. And again, we'll go through the whole uh, uh, musical exercise, okay? So what I did was I played this again an octave lower. notice it's the exact same shapes, but instead of using the first E string and the G string, I'm now using the B string and the D string. And how you play that off of a C chord, okay, the root of the chord is right there, and right there of course, but for our purposes. So think of that exact same pattern, the exact same shapes, but off of the B and the D strings. you can play these any way you want to which is kind of what we did as well okay so we'll get into that but again that's a way to find the double stops off of for instance a C chord in a standard position and if you have a chord and you're not sure how to do that an octave lower um, I'll cover that in some more uh, advanced lessons later on you can always resort to that bar chord. That's always a tried and true way to find them. And then you can use your ear, or if you know the fretboard reasonably well, you can say, oh, right, yeah, that's an E note and that's a C note. That's an E note and that's a C note. Or you can just use your ear. There's many different ways to do it, okay? And then, of course, the next chord was simply a D. Now this is the exact same idea, but I want to talk about this a little bit. So again, just use that major bar chord shape, okay? Remove your fingers, except for the second one, and use that pattern again. Right? And what I did is I played those in reverse. And another one, as if you were going to a C, right? And that's the fun of this stuff. It sounds so musical, no matter how you use it. You can run them in different directions. You can use just parts of them or the whole thing, whatever you want to do. So again, that's how you find them off of the major and the minor chords, okay? And then uh, I think it's safe right now to just get into the musical example, except there's one more thing I want to mention. There's different ways to play double stops, and I'll be covering more in future lessons, but I want to uh, clue you in to a couple that I used here. The second time I went around to the B minor chord, I played
played that, okay? So I'm using the uh, B string and the G string together this time, right? So there isn't a string in between. These are major and minor thirds, which is essentially what the other ones are too, but no theory for today, okay? So how you do this is you take a, a B minor chord, and this would be how you find uh, some cool double stops off of a B minor chord on the uh, from the fifth string, okay? So what you do is you take a look at the chord, that note right there, okay? Again, you notice it's the same finger that I'm pivoting off of. That one kind of rules the chord, okay? So if you think about that, You've got the third fret on the B string, and then you would lay this finger down on the fourth fret on the G string. And you can see that's all right inside the chord. But my suggestion would be to switch up your fingers, okay? That's how you find it, like that, third fret, fourth fret. But use your first two fingers instead. Take that same shape, move it up a whole step and then bar them both at the seventh fret or however you want to play it. And then later on, I played at the tail end of the uh, chord progression and that was over a D chord, okay? So to find the equivalent of what we just did on the uh, B minor, we go to a D uh, bar chord off of the fifth string. That finger right there it's barring across the uh, B string and the G string naturally right so take your first finger place it on the G and the uh, B string at that seventh fret and again it's coming off of that part of the chord and we play this so we're barring at the seventh fret then it's the uh, eighth fret on the B string the ninth fret on the G take that up a whole step Take it back. So now we know how to find double stops off of major and minor chords from the sixth string as well as the fifth. And these are tried and true patterns, right? You hear them in so many songs. Um, Brown Eyed Girl, The Beatles Across the Universe, um, I dig a pony, <laughs> you know, the list goes on and on and on, wild horses from the stones, and they just sound great, all right? All right, so let's just work our way right through the actual musical example, so you have something that you can practice and uh, tie this stuff together, and then also I will explain each and every step of the way where it came from, even though you kind of know that now, but it's good to go through it with the actual uh, example itself, so here we go. So the strumming pattern on all the chords will be exactly the same, just to keep things simple. That's it, down, down, up, down. There you go, the first double stop pattern. So what I did was I strummed the chord, of course. And then placing my second finger on the uh, second fret on the G string, I slid into that first double stop position. Then, pretty simple, right? But very effective. Then we went to the B minor chord. And again, citing the B minor chord at the seventh fret from the sixth string, I played the double stops we just covered, right? Seven and seven, nine, 10 and 11, back to 9 and 7. And you can finger these any way you want. Whatever is comfortable for you, that's the way to do it, okay? So here we go, both of those together. Okay, and then we moved to a C chord. Again, what I used there was what we were talking about earlier. Just playing it an octave lower. But putting a little uh, pizzazz into it, right? But you can see I'm just using the double stops. And that's the beauty of these. You can play them in so many different ways. You can slide in and out of them. You can play the notes simultaneously. You can separate them out. 
whatever you want to do. So again, on the C chord, we have... And then we went to a D chord. And we spoke about that one earlier, but that uh, is worth going over. So again, just really emphasizing that. Find that D bar chord. And I just played the pattern backwards. Okay, so for the first go around, this is what we have then, and I'll play this nice and slow. simple and very effective okay so uh, let's do the second go around then the second go around of course the same uh, chord progression but I played this so this is a bit of that major pentatonic lesson I mentioned uh, just a very brief part of it right so what I did again was I grabbed the G string with my second finger at the uh, second fret and slid all the way up to the seventh fret so I'm visualizing this pattern in reverse. Okay, so I slid all the way up to the seventh fret, seventh fret on the E string, down to the fifth fret, and then as if I'm going for this double stop, the root position I call it, then I went. So you can see everything is right inside that chord, and again a lot of that type of thing was covered in the uh, pentatonic lessons. But again, nice and slow. Okay, and then we're on to the B minor chord, of course, and I played this. And I just covered that as well, but again, it's coming off of that B minor chord, finding that uh, shape, or if you want to bar it. And then we move to the C chord, of course. And again, I'm visualizing this right off of the 8th uh, fret bar chord, and I'm just playing it backwards again. And again, that is the beauty of these. You can play them in any direction you want. You can combine them together any way you want, and it's always going to sound really good. And then, of course, we go to the D again, and I played this. Okay, so what I did there, if uh, you remember when I spoke about playing off of the C chord. Okay, if you can visualize, say, a D chord up here, it's the same pattern. That is, again, the beauty of this stuff. And that's what I really want to emphasize. You don't have to play exactly what I'm playing, although I think the musical example will really help you. But I want you to be able to do this yourself, you know, to just get this stuff in your back pocket, uh, combine it with the major pentatonic stuff, and you're you're flying, right? It's, it's really simple, and, and uh, anybody can do it. <laughs> Honestly, anybody can do it. So anyway, I played right off of uh, the D. And as mentioned earlier, if you think of a D bar chord off of the fifth string, but I played it backwards. So this one was ascending, and this one is descending. So uh, let me take you through the whole musical example, but nice and slow, okay?
So there you go with the double stops on the guitar, hopefully explained, and uh, how to find them on the fretboard quickly and easily, how to relate them to the chords you might be playing, and most importantly, how to get it into your own playing and have fun with it, okay? And uh, again, if you haven't seen the pentatonic lessons, there's links in the uh, description box below, uh, because all of this stuff ties in really, really nicely together, okay? Thanks for watching, and all the best to everyone, and I shall see you in the... Uh, in the next video.